Hello everyone, my name is Arjan and welcome to my second YouTube video. In this video I will be showing you how I've sculpted this um, fantasy airship and the diorama it is in. This sculpt took me forever to make, but I really enjoyed the process and I hope you enjoy the video. This project started with this illustration I made 10 years ago. At that point I wasn't sculpting yet, but I knew I wanted to make this airship in three dimensions one day. I was thinking of making it out of actual wood, but now, 10 years later, I sculpted it with clay. In this sketch the wings are really big, but for the model I decided to reduce them in size. Even though it is a fantasy airship, I felt it was unrealistic to have an airship this big with flapping wings. For the story on how this airship flies, I decided it flies magically and the wings are more like sails, guiding it into the right direction. I start out with making a few sketches of different views of the airship. These sketches help me to define the size of the model and I can use them as a guideline uh, for when I'm making the armature. The armature is made with metal wire. I bend it into shape according to the guides that I just drew. And after that, I use tin foil for the bigger volumes so that I don't use too much clay. Here you can see I use a thinner kind of metal wire for the underside of the body. This metal wire bends a little bit easier than the thick kind I used before, so I was able to shape it more precise and to get a nice even curve along the entire body. Here is the armature with the first layer of modeling clay and the next step was adding the metal wire for the legs. Now that the armature is finished, I started sculpting the body. A big challenge for me during this process is to make all the parts look man-made. Because working with clay it can be difficult to achieve smooth surfaces and crisp edges. And one way I handled this was to use cardboard strips that I glued onto the body. I then sculpted the inside of the body using the cardboard strips as a guide. I also sculpted a texture of wooden planks into the clay on the inside of the body before it had set. To further improve the surfaces and edges, I filed and sanded them, because even with the cardboard edges my sculpting was still too bumpy. I then sculpted some details on the deck of the airship, like some support beams and the hatch, I did this at this stage because now it's still relatively easy to reach. It would have been more difficult had I already started working on the legs, for example. For the wooden panels on the outside of the airship, I sculpted a thin layer onto the armature. I then used an X-Acto knife to give it an appearance of wooden planks. 
I wanted to be able to open the shell of the airship, so I had to come up with a way to sculpt the two pieces separately. I decided to fill up the deck with plasticine so that I could sculpt the shell directly onto the body. As you can see, I'm using another type of modeling clay. This one is called Green Stuff. It is softer than the other clay I'm using, uh, which is called Procreate. The softer green stuff makes it easier to sculpt the thin layer on top of the plasticine without changing its shape. I'm really happy with how this worked out. The shells are exactly the right size because I've made them into the space they would end up in and they're still nice and thin so this couldn't have gone any better. For the airship's legs I wanted them to look like they were made out of logs of wood, so it wasn't necessary to make them perfectly cylindrical. This is why I made them a little bit irregular and I added a little bit of wood grain with an exacto blade. For the hinges, however, they had to be very geometric because I feel like they would not work otherwise. The Procreate putty I am using has a working time of about 20 minutes. After that, it starts to be too hard to work with. Sometimes it happens that you mix too much of the putty and you have some left over. I made some cylinders with this leftover putty and I cut them into slices. I then glued these slices in place with super glue and filled the gaps with some more putty. The legs of the model are stationary, but they had to find a way that they could move if the airship would have been real. On the drawing from the beginning I used ropes, and to imitate those on this scale I used sewing thread. On each leg I superglued three ropes and bound them together onto the leg. On the ends that went into the airship I sculpted some holes in the hull to mask where I glued the thread. The process of gluing all the ropes in place was super tedious. It took me a long time to get this right and I glued my fingers together several times, but the result is great. These fine details are impossible to sculpt, but I feel like they really add to the realism. Initially my plan was to make hinges inside the airship so that the shell could be opened. But the more I thought about it, the more I figured it would be too difficult. This is why I decided to use magnets instead. I found some small but strong magnets that would work great and I installed a metal plate inside the airship. For this method of attaching to work, I of course had to add a magnet inside each shell. I sculpted a little arm inside the shell and I put the magnet in place on the metal plate. Then I had to sculpt the rest of the arm while the shell was still in place. Uh, this was a little bit difficult since it was harder to reach, but like this I was sure it would end up in exactly the right spot. To make the wings I first made a quick sketch to see how big they would have to be. Just like I did with the legs I used putty to make them look like wooden logs and I added the same type of hinge. The sails of the wings had to be thin but after a few failed attempts with other materials I decided to make them out of green stuff. My first attempt was with paper but this started to rip and they were very flat and using a putty gave me the possibility to add some flowing waves into the sail. 
To attach the sails to the wing structure, I used the same sewing thread I used before. I made small holes in the sails in several places and tied the sails onto the structure. I used some super glue to keep it in place. As you can imagine, this took me a long time, but after a little cleanup, the sails were nicely attached to the wings. After a black primer, I started to paint all the pieces in a base coat. Instead of going for the colors I used in the drawing, I decided to make it a little bit darker for a more weathered effect. I then added a highlight to add some depth to the different shapes of the model. The highlight I'm painting here is a bit too light, but the next step is adding washes that make it a little bit darker again. The wash has a really nice effect on the wooden planks. It creeps in between them and it helps to show the countless hours I spent making them. I was really hoping for that because I had no idea if I had made the wooden texture pronounced enough. I used quite a lot of washes on this model, focusing mostly on parts in the shadow. I also dry brushed some parts, but not too much since I wanted the airship to look old and weathered. For the base, I used a piece of plywood and I marked the position of the airship with pencil. After that, I used tin foil to create some mounts that I glued into place with super glue. I then covered everything with Sculpey. I wanted the desert sand to be wavy because of the wind. I roughly sketched the direction of the waves into the clay, keeping in mind how the wind would move between the mounts. I then used another sculpting tool to create the actual waves. I wanted to also add some exposed rocks, so I used a sharp stone to create a rocky texture onto the places without any sand. After a black primer, I stippled on a base coat. The stippling adds a nice sandy texture to the base. Next step was adding some washes for some color variation. Lastly, I sculpted some cacti, the skull of an animal and the broken pillars sticking from the sand. These details add a little bit of life to the diorama and the cacti add some color at the same time. And that finishes this project. I really had a blast working on this sculpt and I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. And for now, here are some close-up shots of the diorama. And thanks again for watching. Goodbye.